Thank you. I'll just continue diagramming it. So I was in a large coliseum standing in the front row listening to my boss. There we have listening. And ties in with church to Sardis, huh? Mm -hmm. Listening to boss. Speak to a large crowd. Let's do that over here. It's the letter to Sardis. Okay. <coughs> um, I asked her why I was there. Why am I here? Let's put in the dreamer's words. You always use the dreamer's words. But I think I'm going to put here. Um, and she mentioned that I would be her successor. She wanted to mentor me, so she wanted to mentor me. And give me a feel of what entailed to be in her shoes. So, um, be in her shoes. Step into her shoes. Okay, so I'll read this again. Feel, give me a feel. So, okay, welcome back everyone. This is part two of the Dream Interpretation class, season 12, class three. This dream we are calling Coliseum because that was the choice and everyone chose to do this one tonight. So here's the dream. And as we do, we say, Father, we thank you that dream interpretation belongs to you. Please grant us interpretations of these dreams that we go over tonight and what you want to speak to the dreamer. Okay, as I read the dream, enter into it, be, put yourself in it. I was in a large coliseum standing in the front row listening to my boss speak to a crowd of hundreds of thousands of people. I asked her why I was there, and she mentioned that I was to be her successor. So she wanted to mentor me and give me a feel of what's entailed to step into her shoes. Now, when we do dreams, as you're listening to someone tell you the dream, you are watching for those things that stand out to you, and try to limit yourself to three things that stand out to you, but three to four at the most. And then you um, look at those things, and then you come back, and the other fills in the details. So let me read this again. And as you, as I read it, you can either look at the diagram or enter into the dream, whatever works for you. Um, I was in a large coliseum standing in the front row listening to my boss speak to a crowd of hundreds of thousands of people. I asked her why I was there and she mentioned that I was to be her successor. So she wanted to mentor me and give me a feel of what's entailed to step into her shoes. Okay, so let's do um, three, three things that stand out to you. Shoes. Shoes. Listening to boss. Listening to boss. What about the Coliseum? Is that not standing a standing out to me? That is standing out to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so feels what it would feel like to step into her shoes is the same as successor, right? Mm -hmm. So those two would go together. Um, okay. All right. So who's this dream about? The dreamer. And why is this dream about the dreamer? She's participating. Okay. She's involved in the dream, so the dream is about the dreamer. So right there, you have. Just the beginning part of your dream interpretation. Dreamer, this dream is about you. Um, then she goes to a coliseum. What could a coliseum represent? Warrior. What's that? Warrior. Warrior? The gladiators. Mm. Oh. <laughs> it's 
So that's that's cool, Mara. Warrior. Place for warriors, right? Place for warriors. What did you say? I was just agreeing with her because like if she was just gonna be talking about someone she was speaking, she could have said a stadium, a conference hall, there's a lot of things, but she chose the word Coliseum, mm -hmm. which is like because that's what I picture too, like the old stone mm -hmm. things with the gladiators and you know that's that's yeah. what I picture too, so mm -hmm. it was where they had the circus in the old days. <laughs> but the circus was kind of bloody. <laughs> yeah, that kind of circus was a different word for circus than what we have now, right? <laughs> um, okay, and then she she's in the front row listening to her, her boss. So Coliseum can also be that play on words, right? Mm -hmm. Call it like I see him. Like I see him standing in the front row. Oh, we're not going there yet. We're, we're listening to the boss. Who's the boss? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, Holy Spirit, right? Could be Jesus, could be the Holy Spirit. Okay. What's next? Shoes. Walk of faith. Protection. Well, it's to step into her boss's shoes. So if her boss is Jesus, what are his shoes? Big. <laughs> Big shoes. <laughs> um, did anyone, what's that verse? Um, walk as Jesus walked, right? Is that in James as well? I love James. I love James. That's there for her. Okay, walk. I'm stepping here. into what he's called her to. Okay, walk. stepping into what he's called her to. That too. Jesus wore more palms. Jesus wore more palms. He was the adult. The palm symbols. Hearing what my son said. Yes, yeah, that's is. to walk the talk. Aaron said Colosseum equals big deal, large. Large. Yeah, good. Large, big deal. Big deal. Okay, thank you. What he called her to do. I'm still working on yours, Francesca. <laughs> what he called her to do. Okay. 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 I did like another story in the Bible. Yes. Um, when the man told from, oh, I always get these mixed up, so forgive me if I do. Oh, Elijah. Elijah goes to Elisha, or the other mm -hmm. way around. Elisha goes to Elijah, yeah. Um, the, the mantle gets shifted, you know, and the, if I'm not mistaken, if you see, if, if didn't the prophet who was leaving say, if you see me go, you know, and, yes. and just how that's passed on, that's kind of what that reminds me of, that whole dream. Yeah, so, and um, I said it when, when we were talking about this, but that phrase, I asked her why I was there. So what's the question in the dreamer's heart? I asked her why I was there. It's a question What's we all purpose. Yeah, it's a question we all have, isn't it? Why am I here? What's my purpose? What's my calling? And sometimes I believe God stirs that up in our hearts because He's taking us into something new. If you ever go through trans when, I shouldn't say if, everybody goes through transition. But whenever you go through it, there's just that place of what should I be doing? What am I here for? What am I, um, what am I, you know, so that's, um, and so as we see that the, the, that's a question on the dreamer's heart is what's, the, you know, what's my purpose? What's my calling? What am I doing here? And this is what she's seeing. And when something is said in a dream, what is that? Yes. It's important, and it's usually a key to the interpretation. So the, um, she said she wanted to mentor me and give me a feel of what's entailed to step into her shoes. So that's a key to um, the interpretation. So what would that mean? What are those two things? 
mentor me, what is um, um teach, teach, counsel. Oh, that's good. Teach, teach, guide, counsel. It's a, a training process. Model. Counsel, training, and model. That's good. So that would probably be good for what is it, John 14 and 16? Isn't aren't those about the Holy Spirit? About what he came to do to be our counselor, our guide, our teacher. Um feel. She wants me to feel. What is give me a feel of what's entailed to step into her shoes. So what would that represent? Give me a yes. It's almost like a mentor wants to give her a sense of empathy. Okay. So, you know, to feel what she's feeling when she's doing when she's reading it, you know, like a sense of empathy. Okay. Okay. Um, and then when you feel something, what what's going on with you? You're stirring. You what? You're stirring. Sorry. You're stirring? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Like when you get a taste of like something like of doing something else and you find your, your spirit is stirring, like it's, it's you're absorbing. Yeah. You get excited. Get excited. Yeah. Stirred up. You're experiencing it, right? Yeah. The feel is an experience. And is this, is this person like more of an artist kind of person, more creative? Um, I would say so. Yes. Because I think their language is different than, like, if this was Roger's dream, it would be, and gave me some experience, or, and showed me how to, that she said, gave me a feel for, or gives, to mentor me and give me a feel. It's the different language. Does that make sense? Oh, like, to someone probably like John, that we would we would talk about it and um, and be more detail oriented and, and more um, just more detail oriented in our explanation. But if we talk to an artist, we would just say, "This is what it feels like. This is you know," and we would compare it more. So does that make sense? Because John has more of an engineering mind, and that's what you're saying with Roger. Roger has an engineering mind where you just say, um, "Yes, yeah. 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 yeah." And so you do. So yeah, because Roger, it wouldn't be like you have a feel for it. Though dreams do give... Um, yeah, so it's less theatrical. We're not, I'm not like the theatrical. Yeah, so this is more theatrical. Yeah, we want to feel for it. We want to be in the Coliseum, John. It was like a big theater hall goes out to the, whatever the ever got, I guess, or whatever that thing was, they talk to people. They have a discussion. That's so it kind a of good makes me think of that. They're having a discourse. <laughs> like he's lecturing. He's giving a lecture. <laughs> Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, I sort of get it. That is so good. I like that. I love that she's standing in the front row. And she's standing in, yeah, what's significant about that? Uh, well, for me, standing in the front row is like you're in, you're in the center. Like you're observing like everything at yeah. the first touch, you know? Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like you're at a concert and it's just blasting at you. <laughs> Oh yeah, the VIP section. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're not. I mean, and likely if you're in the front row, there's not going to be any obstacles in your way. You're not going to be blocked by anything. You're going to get it first. That's good. No obstacles. No obstacles. See, and also be a good student because, like, when I was in school, I sat in the back. <laughs> <laughs> in front of the class. Mm, yeah. Oh, good She's, student. I like that. The IPC. Okay, student. Okay, and um, standing. Is that standing out to you? Mm -hmm. Standing on you. Usually they're sitting when you listen to a speech. Yeah, so standing. Could stand before the Lord. Stand before the Lord, huh? So it's all about body position. Yeah. If you're standing, you're ready to move. So you're ready to do something. If you're oh. sitting, you still have to get up and then get to move. Hmm. So it's like being in a readiness position. And I have to, so 
is she a motivational type speaker, oftentimes the crowds are going to be standing. Wow, Jesus is the ultimate motivator. motivator. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I like that. And I like that. I think that's a key to the interpretation that she's standing because um, the question, why am I here? And yet standing ready to step into what God has. Right. Like they get the impression her boss is also standing somehow. That's the image I get in my mind. I think so because the boss is speaking to the large crowd. Erin said you're ready. So that's that ready. Yes. Yeah, good. Uh, I think so, just a little bit, yes. But it's good to bring it up so that I can emphasize it too. And John, I didn't catch what you said last. Sorry. No, it's okay. I was. Oh, I, the, I, I get the impression that the boss is also standing there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And the. And the, uh, the the other people in the front row are standing at attention also. Okay. So that's what you, that's really cool because when right. you enter the dream, then you get a bigger mm -hmm. picture. Right. And so you can ask the dreamer, is this true? Is this what like, was going on? Like at the beginning of the game or something, the Pledge of Allegiance or something, hmm. they're all standing and they do the anthem. Yes. And so listening to her boss, what does that represent? Coming back to it. Or what's the listening? Yes. Obedience. Obedience. Okay. Which is interesting because in the Old Testament, wherever it said, um, listen, Israel, listen, or hear the Lord, that um, the way that word is defined in Hebrew is hear and obey. It was, it was the same thought. Mm -hmm. That if you heard something, that meant you were going to do it. So that's, that's really a cool tie that hear and obey um, listening and obeying are the same as that that hearing and doing uh -huh. isn't that cool mm -hmm. it is a like so when you say I heard you to someone you're basically saying I'll do what you said <laughs> if you were in the Old Testament yeah I heard you <laughs> okay so we have a pretty good idea of what this dream is about Does anyone want to go for the interpretation what's it mean to be the successor before we do that Next in line. Yeah. yeah. Could it be a play on words? Yes. Yeah. Which, if it's a play on words, that means it's an encouragement, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I mean, I was going to say, um, you know, usually when we're talking about jobs, mm -hmm. we're talking, you know, a person who sings is a singer. Mm -hmm. A person who is having success is a success. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's it is that it's the um it's that emphasis that you're gonna succeed as you step into it. It's don't you level with God, because when you step into what God has for you, it's win win. That if he calls you to it and you step into it, you know you're gonna have victory because because he always wins. That's the greatest thing about being on God's side, is that you always win. Promise. That's his promise, yes. So, let's, uh, what else? Anything else that's standing out? Am I in everybody's way? No. Yes, is that what you said? <laughs> oh, I thought you said yes. You're here. Oh, you did. <laughs> so, that's why she's there to receive the blessing from her, her boss. Ah, oh, that's good. To receive the blessing. Well, oh, you could also be commissioning, huh? Commission. The commission. But you know what I was thinking? You know, Coliseum were a place of competition. They were a place where people competed in, you know, um, a person who succeeds or is going to succeed is going to be a victor. They're victorious. Yeah. So they win the competition. You know, that's the Colosseum kind of, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Like, That's good. I 
like that. And that she's listening to her boss, that can represent obedience. It can also represent prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Listening. And then if the Colosseum is that whatever I say and do what my father's saying and doing, so calling it like you see it, that once God shows it to you, you can call it on earth as it is in heaven. So, on earth. Okay. I keep wondering about her boss is a her. Mm -hmm. Do we care? Well, the boss is still a boss, but often the Holy Spirit is is um, represented as a feminine. Um, and I believe in the Greek and Hebrew, I believe it, it's uh, feminine. Okay. Yes, that's what. So I put. That's why I put Holy Spirit. But does anyone else have something? What else could? Is there other possibilities? No, in the shack, it was a pain in the <laughs> There you have it. Okay, so who would like to interpret this dream? I know the longer you stay on a dream, the more that unfolds and the more you, you get. But um, So who would like to interpret her, or should I call on somebody? <laughs> Dreamer, this dream is about you. It reveals... It indicates. Oh, Karen, I saw that. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Dreamer, the dreamer, uh, dreamer, your dream is about you. It reveals that you are in a place of listening to God, the Holy Spirit, uh, to come into your next phase. And you are being trained up in the way you should go. And you will have success in that new calling. Awesome. Very good. Yes. Homeless. Is anyone itching to just add anything to it? No, everyone's got it. Okay. So, uh, who wants to pray for the dreamer? Francesco, would that be you? <laughs> I saw you look up. <laughs> okay, would you like to pray for the dreamer? Basically, you pray what you see here. You just we just say and do what the Lord is saying and doing. So those things that stand out to you, then you just say, Lord, we come into agreement with what you have for this dreamer. We agree that. Lord, we come into agreement for this dreamer. Um, that what you have for her will come into fruition. We thank you that she's listening to you, yes. and that you are showing her what her next steps are and where her shoe, where she is needed. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. Thank you. Did you feel that? Mm -hmm. I felt that interpretation and prayer. I was like, yes, we are on it. Thank you, Francesca. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next stream. You going to have him take a picture? Yes, I'm going to have you take a picture. Thank you for that, Kate. Rose. Are you there? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rose. I would have <laughs> cried <laughs> later. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> I do think so. Oh, she has her husband is on. Oh, he's the one that puts it on YouTube for us. Yeah, he he's the behind the curtain guy. Yeah. The wizard back there. I'm talking about you, Bob. <laughs> and we're grateful for you. Bob had some dreams he told me about, but we're not going to interpret those tonight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> what a good dreams. Okay. Truth is, I can't really remember them clear enough. <laughs> Better write them down, Bob, and submit them like yes. everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> write them down. No preferential treatment. <laughs> okay, so are we going to... This is a... I, I told her we would do it tonight, so I made an executive decision. <laughs> okay. Um, this dream, I got in an email, and so this is in the dreamer's words. So the questions you have are, are likely the questions I have myself. Um, I think, okay, I had this dream early the, yesterday morning. Little girl, Indian grabbed me around the neck, holding me and crying, said she missed Tawny, 
Her mother said she had flown there and seen her recently. Another came up, another name came up, Herzener. Not sure if it's a man, not sure how to spell it. It was spelled, she spelled it H-E-R-S-E-N-E-R. -E -E Next, in an airport, hundreds of people coming in heard a very calming man's voice making an announcement, announcement very calm and very nice voice. So the dreamer, a little girl, an Indian, Uh, the spelling is T-A-W-N-I-E. Grabbed me around the neck. Yeah. Okay. Um, holding me and crying. Grabbing around the neck. Holding me crying. Said she missed Tawny. Oh, well, actually, Russian name. It says the name Tawny is a Russian baby name. In Russian, the meaning of the name Tawny is it's an abbreviation of Tatiana, which is feminine of the Roman family clan name. Tatius, um, and it means she knows. Oh, cool. Russian? Yeah. And then Herzener. She knows, that's what you had said, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Her, she knows. And then Herzener. Yeah, I'll write it down. Said she flew, let's say, uh, mother said she'd flown there and seen her. Mother flown and seen. Sorry about my writing. Do you have Seen her recently. I'll try to write better. Long. Okay. Then her. I'm not sure how it's spelled, though, right? Correct. Because it's coming up with something for her. So. Hers. <laughs> this is the name. Hers and her. Yeah, this dream's right up your alley, isn't it, Karen? <laughs> okay, next. Okay, so then this is a, this is like the second thing, this is the third thing. Um, airport. Oh. Hundreds of people. A man's voice. What was the reference to Herzner? Uh, it just said another name came up, Herzner. Oh, okay. So um, she said she missed Tawny, so so it could mean another name okay. came up that maybe she missed Herzner as well. And voice um, making announcement. Okay, calm and nice. All right, so I'll read it again. Um, a little girl, Indian, grabbed me around the neck, holding and crying, said she missed Tawny. Her mother said she had flown there and seen her recently. Another name came up, Herzner. Spelling, unsure of spelling, unsure if it was man. Um, in an airport, hundreds of people coming in heard a very calming man's voice making an announcement. Very calm and nice voice. Okay, so with with the if when I get um, like these pieces and parts from someone in and I often do people just send me sections and they um, so because she's not here to answer our questions then and it actually requires more of you as a dream interpreter so you say lord i know interpretation belongs to you help help me understand what this dream is saying 
So um, the way, because there's, it feels like three different parts, right? It could be two or three because Herzner could be a part of the part where she said Tawny. So um, that name could have come up there as well. But when it's a uh, um, two or three dreams in one section, they use, they tie together. Like if you have five dreams in one night, they're interconnected and related often. So even though they can seem like night and day and don't go together, there will be a thread that will pull it together. So as you interpret them all, you'll get a bigger picture of what God is saying. So um, where I would start is um, like Herzner, if if you you can look it up, and this is what I encourage you, like like this the dream that's like Teresa's experience recently, where you hear things in the night. In fact, I think it says when she she heard the voice so clearly that I woke up and I asked my husband if someone was talking on the phone. Was he talking to someone on the phone? Because she heard it that clearly. Um, and so when you hear those things, then I the first thing is I look it up. I keep you know I see if there's a meaning. And Karen looked up Tani which in Russian can mean she knows. It's what Tatiana is that, mm -hmm. the, what it's derived from. Right. And I think there's, uh, if you want to look in here, you can see if this one. If this there's the Native American meanings for um, Tony, also just called T-A-H-N-E-E. -E. Um, the <clears throat> the um, possible tribal meanings include princess, which was possibly the Comanche tribe, desire or desirable one from the Sioux tribe, and then Peaceful Valley, which is from the Crow tribe, which tied in with the airport in my mind because it's as the crow flies. Oh. <laughs> and the little girl had just flown there and seen her recently. And then the man's voice was calm. So the peaceful valley. So maybe he was talking and down on the airplane. Um, well, what's exciting about an airplane? What does the airplane represent in dream language? Airport airplane? Going higher? Airport going higher? So going higher in God, um, what would that, like if you were to speak to someone that didn't know what that meant? To go higher in God, what would you say? Going to the next level. Going to the next level. Yeah. Glory to glory. I'm wondering if her, oh, her, um, her senior uh -huh. is kind of like a play on words, like her senior. Her senior. Okay. Mm -hmm. Her and senior. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay, this thing said in the book says that Tani is um, language cultural origin is gypsy. It means little one, and the spiritual connotation is trust, trusting. And the scriptures, Matthew 10 42, those who give one of these little ones a cup of cold water because they are my followers will truly get their reward. So that was Matthew what? Uh, 10 42. Thank you. Okay. And Aaron said, going higher in your ministry or call. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Thank you, Aaron. She put, it's really good. Er, it's really going to take off. Oh, it's going to take oh, off. Nice. That's good. Okay, so an airport, um, so a house can represent your life, an airport is where airplanes take off, so it can represent a higher call in your ministry. Hundreds of people being there, what would that represent? More than God's doing a, God's doing a corporate thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just individual, yes? Okay, I feel like that because Oh, they said it's been prophesied that since Billy Brown passed away, there's going to be people that are going to be people from all over the world that are going to be rising up to take his place as evangelist. And I feel like that this signifies this is okay. What I wrote was it's prophetic of people being brought higher. God's meaning right now, and this shows the sheer velocity of what He's bringing.
sheer velocity of what he's doing. What he's doing. Okay. So people coming in, and airports from all over the world, so this isn't just like one town or like just LAX, it's, it's, you know, it's not just Los Angeles, it's people coming in too from all over the world. Like, okay, the man's calm voice, what would that represent? That would be the Holy Spirit and God like talking to the people as a whole. Did you, were you getting ready to say something, Karen? Well, I'm just remembering. I could feel uh, it. <laughs> Actually, I heard her. I could hear the <gasps> pretty voice. Yeah, the pretty I'm, voice. Yes. I'm, I'm, I just am reminded of, you know, we're talking about it's a little girl that's in this dream and it's, yes. you know, talking about Tawny, which may not also mean little girl, a little one. Yeah, and she and knows. I remember, yeah, and I'm reminded of that verse that says um, that we're supposed to approach God like a child. Okay. That's good. That's good. I was, uh, when you were going there, I thought you were going to say that, um, let the little ones come unto me. Well, that's too, but yeah, no, just like, approach. we're supposed to approach him like a child. That's what he tells us we're supposed to do. And that calm voice, you know, that kind of beckoning almost. Oh, what I like that. that beckoning. The voice, the calm voice. You know, you're not going to come towards a voice that scares you. You're going to come to a calm, soothing voice. And That's what if person or was here's an ear? Hearsayer ear. is what I see with that for some reason. Hearsayer? Yeah, I don't know why. I know not all the letters were right. But I keep looking at that and saying hearsayer. Okay, and Karen, you saw her somewhere, and Teresa, you saw her what? Here's an ear that's a good one. Like to listen to Yeah. Here's the new one. We're talking about the ear and let him hear. Yes. Uh-huh. Can you get me a verse for that? Right. <laughs> Revelation. <laughs> Revelation. Yeah, Revelation. I think it's, <laughs> is it Revelation 3 1? Revelation, and I think it's also in Matthew 13, isn't it? Something like that. See, I put that 3 1, it's not right. What is it? Well, at the very end. And uh, Rose said, Revelation. Wasn't it at the end of speaking? Oh, at the end of uh, three, one, listening? Yeah, those w whose hearts are open. Yeah. Revelation 3 6, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. But maybe the hearing was in one of the earlier. It could, yeah. And it could be another uh, version. Because he says, though, whose heart is open, but others say those that have an ear to hear, right. let them hear what the Spirit is saying. So you're right, that's, the, that's really good. Okay. All right, so where we are is, um, why, why is the little girl holding her around the neck and crying? It's interesting that we saw, there's a lot of tie-in from even the previous stream we did, and this one, like holding me, and if you remember from Revelation, the holding is that closest of relationships. Jesus holds them in, the palm, in his hand, the seven stars and seven messengers. That holding is a close relationship. Well, I and mean, if you think about a child crying, they're terrified or they're sad or anything. What do they do? They go to mom or dad and they hold them around the neck and they snuggle up next to them to be as close as possible to get that comfort. For comfort, okay. Yeah. It's not like choking, strangling, it's, I need comfort, I need to be close. Even babies, when they're falling asleep on you, you know, usually, a lot of times when I call the baby, they have their little head nestled up against my neck, and they just kind of melt all over you. <laughs> yes. You know? Yes. And the little girl's saying she missed Tommy. Mm -hmm. And she could possibly be missing the prisoner. So what would that represent? It's a little girl saying that. She's crying and saying, I miss Tawny. Tawny can mean, has a, um, and like Teresa was leaning towards Peaceful Valley. So if she's um, crying that she misses the peace or the calm, or as um, the she, she knows, what was that? She's missing what she already knows. She's missing what she knows? Yeah, Good one. Good one. This is almost like a parallel to 
when we just had. <laughs> it is, isn't it? And what was that, Mara? Eric said childlike faith. Okay. And Karen, how are you um, tying it in like the previous Well, time? because, okay, she says she misses Tommy. Well, she misses knowing what she used to do. She misses no. Remember, we just talked about this with transitions. We don't always know when we're in a period of transition, we don't always know why we're here or what we're doing or whatever. And it can be very um, disconcerting. And it can also be very scary. And it kind of seems to me like she misses that security of knowing what she was supposed to do and what she was there for before she's getting elevated. You know, she's kind of in a transitional phase. Okay, if the child's in a transitional time, who could the child represent? Could represent the baby Christian. It could represent somebody who's just stepping into their calling and doesn't really know what it's about yet. Or maybe, because another word for Indian, unless she's actually talking from India or Indonesia or whatever, it could be native, which is, um, what's the right word? Um, yeah, the origin needed there. Yeah, the, the origin, um, like where she, where she was in the beginning. So maybe the little girl represents who she, like who, who or what she was originally called for, what she was originally created for, like her native spirit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It makes sense in my head. And then if she's saying that she misses Tawny and the, the person or whatever, um, misses having someone to hear or to listen to her. Um, mm. So maybe, I don't know if you know if this is possible, but maybe the little girl represents the original her. The original her, okay. Did the dreams ever work like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, James 1 talks about when you look at the, when you look at yourself in the mirror, that word is that you remember the Genesis, the who God created you to be before the fall of Adam and Eve. So you're looking, so the James chapter one, so it should be, looks like an arrow. So as you were talking about that, that she would remember um, who she was or who she was originally created for, what God originally created her for, then it would be like looking at that, looking at her face in the mirror um, and seeing, remembering who she really was. And being able to love on it, being able to respect that part of who she is. Like, you know, sometimes people will tell you that you're called to this, you're called to that, and you're like, no, not mm -hmm. really, but it's what you're good at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so people kind of distance themselves from that. But if she can see it, and the, and the little one's loving it, like, snuggling, and, you know, if that's like her wanting to embrace. embrace that part of her. Okay. Embrace. Okay. All right, Karen, yes. Well, I'm just remembering in our study of Revelation how there's that one part where it talks about um, return to your first love. Yeah. When you're being snuggled, yeah. when you're close, when you're whatever, you're being loved on. And it's almost like a reminder to reflect on what, where she came from, like Teresa was saying, and go back to that first place. You know? Yeah, that's a possibility. That's good. What do you think, Sharon? What's going through your mind? What's standing I'm out? Just, I'm just taking it all in. I'm, I'm kind of agreeing. Um, I kind of was going along with what Teresa was saying about, you know, what, the original, who she was originally, and having to and stepping into this new, um, this new calling. And all the emotional things that go through it, and then you do miss the, the old, and and you want to kind of hang on to it because it's comfort. And then you know when you when you're called to move, um, it's it's an uncomfortable time, even though it's a good time. 
It's that transition time. Yeah, yeah. transition, which is also kind of ties in with that first dream as well. The and the airport, the transition in the, makes sense with the airport because in the airport you're moving and going somewhere and it's really a huge place of transition. Yeah, taking off. Things start to get faster. Well, like you said, the sheer velocity, that's what stood out to you earlier. It's how quickly things can pick up. And yeah. push. Okay. So if we were to put all these together, what what would you tell the dreamer? <laughs> dreamer, this dream is about you. Go for it. into it. As you step into it, it'll unfold. Start. Dreamer, this dream is about you. <laughs> <laughs> um. You you're stepping into embracing comfort of what you've known before. And you are in a time of you're in a time of transition and not just for you but for many. And you have the Holy Spirit guiding you and keeping you calm through all. And oh, and you will have the ears to hear what the Lord has for you. Good. good. Yes, that was good. So as as you heard it, what else would you add to it? Is there anything else you would add? Karen? Um, I would say um, to remember um, the things you learned at first. Remember the calling you felt at first and approach it like a child. Nice. Okay. Teresa, are you itching to? No. Okay. Yeah. It's something that did stick out to me. It's not like in the interpretation of it, but in just the base pieces of it. It reminds me of King uh, Stanley with Nebuchadnezzar, where he's like, tell me the dream and what it means. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these are good. So, Mara, that was excellent interpreting. And um, and there's always more. And what I like about this class is we unfold a lot of it. So when you're doing an interpretation, you can just do the nuts and bolts of it. You know, just the basic dream where this dream is about you. You're in this time of transition. There's some, you know, and, and do just a basic one leaving part. And then you can tell them there's more. And as you, you know, ponder it and pray over it, God will reveal more to you and it will unfold. And so you leave that space open for the Proverbs 25 two for the dreamer to search out more. Um, because that's what it was, you know, those that have an ear. Mm -hmm. And that as in Matthew 13, those that have even more will be given. So as we search things out, God unfolds more and more and more. So I would... Um, there's a lot here, and you can go in a lot of different ways, but I think what was said tonight was really good. Mm -hmm. So I I agree with that. It's so interesting how the dreams connect, the first one, and then how they tie in with Sardis, um, and what we went over earlier. And I, I love that beckoning, too, the, um, that was brought out about the calling, that God is is a God of peace, and, and that he's beckoning people to come to him. I love that. Um, so, very, very good. Is there anything else? Anything else someone has a burning desire to say? Is that it? Okay, it is five after eight. We will close. Thank you, everyone, for joining on Facebook Live, and thank you guys for all of what you put in tonight. Um, I pray that God will do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Lord, that the things we went over tonight, that you would bring them back to our remembrance, that we would remember them, that we would value them, that, Holy Spirit, you would quicken our spirits to be stirred up um, and to pursue you, Lord, to be on fire for you, to be listening um, 
as the dreams and as the letter to Sardis um, admonished us to, to be listening to you. And as we listen to have hearts that, that desire to walk out what you're calling us to do. Father, I thank you for the dreamers on Dreamers Live. I thank you for the dreamers here. Lord, I ask that you would continue to counsel us in the night, that you would continue to pour out your dreams, that you would stir us with those dreams of um, that we can pray into, those intercession dreams, the healing dreams, the calling us closer to you dreams, the dreams, all the different dream types, Lord, that you that you pour out on us. Father, I pray that you just stir us up to to remember them and to um, to pay attention to what's standing out, to what you're speaking in those moments, Lord, that we can get the fullness of what you want to stir our hearts up towards. And Lord, we just give you this time. We thank you for all the, the things that you planted in our hearts. I ask for everything to um, come to the full fruition that you designed it to. Holy Spirit, that you breathe on the teaching tonight, that you breathe on what we shared and what we spoke about that it would come into that full fruition that you desire it to. And Lord, I pray that you just um, draw us closer and closer to you. We love you. You are a good, good father. I thank you for your tender care for us. I thank you that you're a God of peace, that you beckon us to come, that you draw us close and that you speak those uh, mysteries to us, Lord. And I thank you that you bless our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our hearts to receive and be responsive and attentive. And Lord, I thank you that you're just promising to do more, immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. So we just say yes to all of it, Lord. Father, I ask that you put a hedge of protection around each person here, all those that watch online. And Father, I pray that you would um, bless our finances, bless our families, bless our friendships, bless our connections, bless our dreams, bless our times with you in our prayer. Bless those God incidences in our lives where we see you at work and that we can experience you more, Lord, and taste and see that you are good. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>